The FDA continues to approve new testing for COVID-19, and there are also questions that come along with that, the accuracy of those tests and whether the right decisions are being made as a result of these tests. That's why we're bringing in nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, for some advice. And Dr. Coley, it's good to talk to you this afternoon. Let's Hi, Kim, it's nice to see you. Is, yeah, tell me a little bit about what these tests are. I mean, I, I, we're hearing about, you know, some of them took days to get results. Some of these are rapid. Yeah, so we now have two tests, actually, two different tests. The first is a swab test, which we originally had. So that's where they put a Q-tip in your nose and actually try to co collect the viral sample, look at the genetic material of the virus, and that's how they decide if you're positive or negative. They have a fast version of that now that gives a positive result in about five minutes and a negative result in about 15 minutes. But that test only looks for active infection because you have to have viral particles for that to be positive. The second test is what's called a serology test or a blood test. And this is an antibody test that collects your blood and looks to see if you have any antibodies against the virus. And this actually indicates either active infection or previous infection, depending on the type of antibody you have. And similarly, you can get a result in about 15 minutes or so. So two rapid tests that are a little different scientifically, but both tell us whether or not you have active infection. And only one tells us about previous infection. So let's get into the false negative and false positive. What, what leads to those types of results? So no test can be 100% accurate, but we really want to try to minimize the wrong results. So a false positive is when you actually don't have the virus, but you end up testing positive. And you can imagine that happens either because of contamination of the sample. So you're working in a lab that has is analyzing viral particles all day. So the sample can get contaminated or the testing reagents can get contaminated or you can get cross reactivity of the antibody. And the false negative, which is the opposite, you actually have the virus and you test negative. Those are actually the ones we don't wanna miss really under any circumstances. Those can happen either because you don't get enough, enough virus on the swab if you're swabbing or you're very early in the course of your illness. So you actually haven't tested positive yet because you don't have enough viral particles present. So uh, my, my guess would be the conclusion is we just in general need more testing and um, perhaps need to review more of those results. It sounds like we need more data. Absolutely right. We need a lot more testing. And the president just said in his press conference that we've done more testing than any other country. But if you normalize that for a population, we really haven't. So yes, more testing for sure. But the other thing I want people to realize is that because the FDA is fast tracking these tests, they're not really all that good. So their false negative rate varies from about 8% up to 33%. So one in three people can be positive and still test negative. So don't put too much stock in the test. If you have the symptoms, you have to assume that you actually have the virus. And if you test negative, you're negative that day, but that doesn't mean you may not turn positive later. This all comes down to common sense. Trust your gut. If you've got the symptoms and you're not doing that poorly, just quarantine yourself, self-isolate and let everyone else stay away. <laughs> Absolutely right. In fact, some doctors are, even if the test comes back negative, they're treating patients as if they have the COVID because it's not about the test. It's really about the clinical picture and the symptoms that we really have to go off of at this point. Dr. Pyle Coley, thank you as always.